Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, I want to get into a discussion here. Many people do not understand that we are a blessed generation. Now, many people don't think that we are blessed for everything that is taking place throughout the world. But that's not what I'm talking about. But all these things that are happening have to happen in order for God's word to be fulfilled. But this is what I'm talking about. This is what many people that have a misunderstanding of Bible prophecy. This is why it's very clear that you, people need to understand what the scripture really says. That's why it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, Study to make yourself approval unto God and rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what we got to do and that's what we do. Because so many people are reading passages, are talking about fully something else, and they're trying to make it, talk, they're trying to make the passage of the scripture talk about them when it's really talking about a different group of people here. That's why. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. So this is what I mean by we are a blessed generation. Okay? The rapture of the church, okay, is only for the church. It's only for the church. The Old Testament saints, okay, the Old Testament saints will not be participating in the rapture. Okay? They will not. It's very clear from Scripture that they will not be participating in the rapture of the church. The people that will be participating in the rapture are those people that got saved from the day of Pentecost, from Acts chapter 2, to the very hour of the rapture. Now, I want to go into this through Scripture. Because Matthew, Mark, and Luke is not talking about the rapture. They may, there may be some uh, descriptions in there talking about it, but Jesus does not describe it in great detail yet. Because if you understand what he said to the disciples, like, I have much more to tell you. What do you think that stuff was? that much more, that he said, I have much more to tell you, but now you cannot bear it, but later you will. But later you will. That's why. His fateful night, before his crucifixion, he told the disciples that he was going away, but he said he'd come back, he'd prepare a place for them. That's what he's always talking about in John chapter 14. In my Father's house are many... Okay, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And what? What's he going to do when he comes again? He's going to receive you unto himself. So that where I am, there you also may be. He didn't say, I'm going to come back and be where you are. He said, I'm going to come take you out of here so that you'll be where I am. Very clear. There's a big difference there than the second coming in that passage there. Because the second coming is the angels that gather the people. You know? Not Jesus Christ. He sends his angels out. At the rapture, he takes us very clear on that subject. So, all through the Old Testament, it talks about the dead will be raised. Now, I, want, I'll, I only know two passages where it talks about that. So I want to take you to the book of uh, Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, the Old Testament. <laughs> Chapter 20. Let me see here. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 19. <clears throat> right here. Your dead shall live again, together with my dead body. They shall rise, awake, and sing, you who dwell in the depths. For your dawn is like the dawn of harps, heaps, <clears throat> and the earth, listen, and the earth shall cast out the dead. The earth shall cast out the dead. Clearly speaking of a resurrection there, and there's no question about it. Now, let's go to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. Okay. 
okay? Let's go to Daniel chapter 12. Okay, this is the angel Gabriel, right? Yeah, I believe it's, the, yeah. So let me start from here. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, speaking of the time of Jacob's trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at, listen, and at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of, the dust of the earth shall awake. Now there's two pauses here. The resurrection of the just and the unjust. The resurrection of the saved and the lost. <clears throat> he says, And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life. Some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine. Like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever so I want to go down to verse I'll start from verse 11 and from the time of the day listen to this it says it clearly but this actually pinpoints when Jesus is coming back at the second coming it says it clearly in the book of Daniel it gives a timeline of history Look at this. And from the time that the, the daily sacrifices is taken away, the Antichrist is going to stop the... the Because they're going to have a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. So, remember, it also says the same thing in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. He shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. The word week there in the Hebrew is pekdad, or sh it's a shabua, which is a period of seven years. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice. <clears throat> so what's going to happen when the Antichrist brings an end to it? When he desecrates the temple, you know when Jesus is coming. The Bible clearly indicates it. You will know. You will not know the day or the hour, but you will know the year. Like suppose, like right now. Well, forget. Right, it's about twenty. It's twenty thirteen, but we're going into two thousand fourteen. Let's say the Antichrist signs the covenant or confirms it. January 1st, 2014. Will we know when Jesus will come back? Definitely. 2014, so 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 2021, Jesus Christ will return. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know the year that this is the year. 2021, Jesus Christ is coming, but we don't know the day or that we don't know the hour, but we know he is coming. So you'll know. Because listen to this. And from the time that the daily sacrifices is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up. Set up. It's going to be set up. Remember this. Listen very carefully. The Bible clearly indicates this. Okay? We're going to get into all of this in a minute. <clears throat> and from the time that the daily sacrifices is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. At the end of the days. At the end of what days? See that? It doesn't say at the end of... Okay, let me read this again. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. At the end of the days. At the end of the days of the tribulation. It's so clear, man. It is so plain, ladies and gentlemen. You see? People would know exactly when Jesus Christ will return. That's why it says, 
blessed is he who waits and comes to the one. You're really going to be blessed because, you know, the Antichrist is going to go on a rampage. But, anyways, let, let me, sh hold on, I'm going I'm to read this to you just to show you there's actually a timeline of events here. Let me go here and show, I'll read this to you guys here. Okay. <sighs> about the Antichrist. Yeah, right here. Okay, the Great Tribulation. On the day that the Antichrist breaks the covenant, like we just read, and sets up his image, which was the abomination of desolation that we wrote. I'll read it again to you guys, so I can show you guys. Okay, on the day that the Antichrist breaks the covenant, and sets up his image in Jerusalem, the countdown of the exact, the exact, numbers of days until the second coming of Jesus Christ will begin. The Bible spells it out in years, months, and days exactly how long this period of great tribulation will be. Three and a half years, or 42 months, or 1260 days, Revelation chapter 12 verse 6 to 14. That's talking about where the Jews are, uh, what's it called? The Jews will be nursed for a time, a time, and half a time. We're just talking about the exact same thing for the last half of the three and a half years. Now let me read that again to you. Or was it verse 11? Yeah. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up. So when it's set up, there shall be. Once it's set up, there shall be. 1,290 days. You'll not know the day or the hour, but you will know the exact year. When those days are complete, Jesus is coming back. This is the day Jesus is coming back today, but we don't know the hour. We, wait, you will know the year, but once those days are expired, because you'll see the sun going dark, the moon, you should be appearing any second now. Right? You're, you'll know, you'll know. Put it that way, you will know clearly found in scripture totally so we just saw in Isaiah the abomination that is uh, set up is the image no question about it Jesus talked about that in Matthew as well when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet he's referring to this let the reader understand flee, to, flee. run because the wrath of God is about to fall Flee, because all kinds of stuff's going to happen. It's going to be a bad time. God's wrath will be poured out. What's well, already poured out way before then, okay? God's wrath will be poured out way before then. It's just, he's going to start killing the Jews like nuts. He's going to be He's going to be going on a rampage and everything. But this is, so we saw Isaiah talked about the resurrection. Daniel talked about it right here. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. They'll come back. Okay? And then in, uh, I just want to, I'm just going to show you guys to make a point here. And then Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4. And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem. And it goes on and on. And what does it say? If you go on, it goes up here. Thus the Lord my God will come, and all the saints with you. So all the saints. And then it, the saints. Okay? And then if you go to uh, the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 14, what does it say? Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold the... Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to accuse judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. Now, how in the world did he come back with ten thousands of his saints? And we see it here as well. This cannot be at the end of the second coming. Because the Bible is clear that that's not talking about, like I said, Matthew is talking to the Jews. They asked Jesus, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age? 
They knew nothing about the rapture. They knew nothing about it. So Jesus explained the signs that will follow. The Jews require a sign. So Jesus gave them sign what will happen to give them an idea of when he will return. So how could he come back with saints? Because look at here. This is clearly talking about the second coming here. This is not talking about the rapture. There's a big difference here. Because look. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 29. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect. From what, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now you see that, where it said that in Matthew chapter 24, verse. Where was it? Let me see here. Because lawlessness, but yeah, verse 13, Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. That's not talking about salvation he that endures that holds on if you can survive the tribulation somehow at the end of that God's going to send his angels and they're going to save you from the tyranny of the Antichrist they're going to come and get you so when it says they shall be gathered where are they gathered it says it clearly that they are gathered no question about it and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other now where are they gathered keep reading the whole thing many people try to make this what it's talking about but this is not talking about this at all where verse 40 where it says then two men will be in the field one will be taken and the other left two women will be guarding at the meal one will be taken and the other left because Jesus also talked about that somewhere over here. Let me see here. Shortened. Here, and if anyone, not there, not there. Yeah. For wherever the carcass is, there the egos will be gathered together. The one that is taken is taken in judgment. And the one that is left is left to enter the millennium. You may say, how do you know that? Well, let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 17. Start from verse 34. Luke 17 verse 34. What does it say? Luke 17 verse 34 says, I tell you, in that night there shall there will be two men in one bed the one will be taken and the other will be left two women will be guarding together the one will be taken and the other left two men will be in the field the one will be taken and the other left and they answered and said to him where Lord and they're asking where will they be taken you know where Lord so he said to them wherever the body is there the eagles will be gathered together. They're going to be, they're going to be put to death when Jesus Christ returns. It's going to be an awful time for the uh, unbelieving world. And you can also see this in uh, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 right here. Talking about the wheat and the tares. Let them grow together until the end of the age. Because they didn't understand the parable that Jesus gave. So it said, so there's another parable he spoke. Okay, not there. Where was it? Yeah, right here. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the terrors of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the 
sons of the kingdom, but the terrors are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. No mention of the church there. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So it says clearly, at the end of the age, they will be gathered out. Now let's go back to Matthew chapter 24. Remember, the righteous shall shine in the kingdom of their father. So let's see what it says here. So Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. This is where they are gathered. Right here. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him. And He will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. So this just proves that no rapture took place here. This is the gathering for the judgment before the millennium is set up. It clearly shows they were all divided. They were all mixed up. So they're dividing them, the saved and the lost. And what does he say to verse 34? What does he say to the, to the sheep? To those that have survived the tribulation. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And he goes down, go down to verse 41. Remember, the righteous will, will, uh, they will shine in the kingdom of their father, and the, weak, the terrors will be thrown and they're burned, so it will be at the end of the age. What does it say in verse 41? Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. In verse 40, and, and these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Let's go back and see what it said in Matthew 13. And the righteous will shine forth as the sun, in the kingdom of their father. Exactly. So I just showed that there was nothing, there was no, this is not a rapture here. This is just a gathering. There was no rapture. And if there was a rapture, what would be the point of dividing if you already have them with you? There would be no reason. And plus, what's the point of going up and down if you're just going to bump into each other? And if that was the case, then you get a resurrected body. Therefore, there's no one left to populate the millennial kingdom because you can't have sex in a resurrected body. And there's no reason to have Satan down in the bottomless pit. Because the very purpose for him being there is so he doesn't see the nations. There would be no nations because Jesus Christ just finished judging the nations. And there's only the righteous there. And we're all with Jesus. There, there's so many things. The, the scripture clearly denies a post-tribulation rapture. That is a lie. So, you see what I just showed you in Matthew? There's no mystery here at all. Not whatsoever. And the Jews are asking him a question. Remember that. Look at this again, verse 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of thy coming, and at the end of the age? And yet, we don't ask for signs. The just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And yet they're asking him for a sign. Because they, afterwards, they, afterwards they, they turn into the church. But Jesus is clearly talking to the brethren, the Jewish, the Jews here. He's talking to all the Jews. It's clearly for the Jews to show them that he's their Messiah, that he gave these signs, so they will know, wow, this must be our Messiah. He predicted our whole entire history before it even happened. Yet it happened exactly as he said. So, this is what I want to get into right here. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, okay, his father 
I commit my spirit into your hand, it is finished. And he gave up his ghost. So he died. So the Sanhedrin, the Jews, did not want the bodies to remain on the cross because the Sabbath was drawing nigh. So they, they went to ask for permission to order to break the legs because the way they're, the fixation is they're holding themselves up on the cross. When you break them, you're, fall, you're falling down so your lungs are <coughs> you're suffocating until you just die. That is, was a painful death. <coughs> so when they broke the legs of the, the thief and the other guy, I don't call the other guy a thief because he got saved. He was no longer a thief anymore. His sins are forgiven. He's saved. He's with Jesus. So when they broke the thief's legs and they broke the other guy's legs and they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They said, make sure. So they pierced his side. And what happened when they pierced his side? Blood and water came out of his side. Now I believe right there and right there and on, Jesus Christ was birthing the church. He was giving birth to the church. Right there. Because after his resurrection, if you realize, when he appeared to the disciples, and he only appeared to the disciples. you recognize that? He didn't appear afterwards to the Pharisees and say, You see, I rose from the dead. He didn't, he didn't do that. He appeared to the ones that loved him, and the ones that he loved, and the ones that loved him. And he said, See, that is I myself. For spirit does not have flesh and bone that you see that I have. And then he breathed on them. He said, Receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And then after, in Acts chapter 2, they're told, Wait for the promise of the Father, which you've heard from me. For John baptized you with water, but many days from now you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues and all that, to be empowered. So they waited, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. That's when the, the church began, right there. And then afterwards, Paul, Paul came along, and what happened? In 1 Corinthians, chapter 15 right here 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 to 52 behold I tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trump will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed it was a mystery before Paul came along. This was a new thing. This is not the second coming. This is a this is a rapture. Okay? He's gonna take us out of here. Way before. But I mean harpazo, which means literally translated means rapture. To be caught up. It's his coming. He's gonna come get us. So that's first Corinthians. And Romans where's Romans here? Romans chapter 11, Paul also talks about it, verse 25, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so, all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. That's very important. You have to put those, both of those in context. Your, your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until, you see that word, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written. God, because the Jews originally, they rejected Jesus. He came, he showed them signs after signs, they rejected him, they, they thought they killed him, but that was all part of the plan anyways, it was prophecy and everything. Then Paul came in. Paul started preaching to the Jews. They couldn't stand them. They said, you're blaspheming. And they, they, they stoned them. They left them for dead in Lystra. And so on. So Paul got fed up. You stiff necks. I'm going to the Gentiles. So God has left the Jews aside for now. Okay? So God has decided to call himself a bride. To create himself a church. So he's been, he's been working with the body of Christ. And when the last Gentile believer is saved, zap. We're out of here to the glory of God. And God's going to He's going to focus His attention back on Israel again. And all Israel will be saved. And He said the same thing in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Having made known to us the mystery of His 
will according to his good pleasure which he published in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him now the Jews are not in Christ right now the body of Christ is that's why we are the body when it, once the fullness of the time comes we're out of here you see that very clear from Scripture so the rapture of the church was a mystery way before in Matthew Mark Luke none of that is a mystery totally talking about totally something different here but for we who are alive and remain because why would the people be discouraged what about our loved ones that died man what's gonna happen to them Paul said do not worry I do not want you to be ignorant brethren concerning those that have fallen asleep lest you sorrow as others who have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus for this we say to you by the word of the Lord for the Lord himself we will not perceive those that are fallen asleep for this we say to you by the word of the Lord for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then for we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and from that time on shall we ever be with the Lord therefore comfort one another with these words now didn't they know the Old Testament didn't they know about Daniel it says the dead will be raised and why were they concerned if they knew about it ah they, they it was a totally talking about a total different event here even in Daniel chapter 20 I mean uh, sorry uh, Revelation chapter 20 I saw the souls of those that were beheaded they will be re resurrected with the Old Testament saints but we are out of here before the time of Jacob's trouble thank God the rapture of the church is a gift to the church thank God for the rapture we're going home brothers and sisters so just be ready to meet the Lord we're out of here once the last believe once the last Gentile believer gets saved zap we're out of here to the glory of God Jesus Christ is coming back suddenly and only we will see him it's going to be all invisible for the, well they're going to see the effects of the, uh, the rapture like crashes plane crashes and all that stuff but we're out of here we're leaving this planet very soon so just be ready to meet the Lord and God bless you all